Hey, what's going on, guys? And welcome to episode 8 of the Lionel Trains 10 Days of Christmas Spectacular series here on my channel. As always, my name is Mike, and in today's video, we are finally going to be reviewing the 1952 Lionel catalog. Okay, let's open it up and we'll see what we have. But before we do, let's get one final shot of the catalog cover here. Here we have some iconic locomotives, including the 2343 Santa Fe. We also have the 2056 Junior Hudson next to it. Then we have the 2025 Pennsylvania K5, along with the Pennsylvania Turbine, the Union Pacific Alco, and a 2026 type engine. And then finally, at the top of the bridge here, we have the CNO switcher. Okay, so our first item here is this Lionel Lions Scout set, numbered 1119, and it's a three-car freight set, and as you see, the prices were very affordable back then. It was only seven. I also forgot to mention the bold advert advertisement on this page here, which says, yet again, men of tomorrow choose Lionel today, and that is some very impressive advertisement there. We also do have a young man here with his little engineer's cap and bandana. And here we have all the names of the iconic railroads at the time. Next up, we have some more 027 line of engine engines. We have the 2034 type steam locomotive. We also have a 2026 um freight set with the smoke unit in the smokestack here and then we have the silver floodlight tower next we have the 2025 freight set with two freight cars in the caboose and then we have the 2056 uh, junior hudson freight set and then on page seven here we have our first introduction to the 362 barrel loader and as you can see it's very different from the barrel loader that we all know and love today because a lot of people do not know for those of you guys who are kind of new to the hobby that the barrel loader was going to be way different than what it was originally as you see we have the green base we have a red structure on the outside and then we have a very nice looking silver ramp but the production model has a gray base, brown structure, and a yellow ramp. So it was definitely a big difference at the time. We also have some diesels, including the 2033 Union Pacific Alco in silver. And then we have a 2032 Erie type Alco. Now, if you buy the Union Pacific, you'll end up getting a passenger set. But if you get the Erie set, you would get a consist of freight cars. And then we have the freight station. Or the illuminated stop station, I should say. With the automatic stopping feature. Here we have the 2056 again, both as a passenger and a freight set. All of these locomotives that were made in 1952 did not come with magnet traction because the Korean War was still taking place during this time. So Lionel wasn't really coming up with anything too new in 1952. But thankfully, they did reissue magnet traction once again in 19, between 1953 and between 1954. Also, just in case I forget, we do have another misdirected illustration of the 445 switch tower. Here we have a green base, a brown structure with some white trimming and a green roof. But the production mo model is much different than what it was in the catalog here. Next up, we have the 455 oil derrick with the red top which is a very rare variation to find. And then over here we have our Pennsylvania type locomotives, including 
the 675 uh, K4 with the three freight cars here. And then we have a 671 reissue of the Pennsylvania Turbine. Once again, these engines did not come with magnet traction, but they were very nice. Now, a funny thing about the 671 and the 20, the 726 reissue of the Berkshire, some variations of these engines have the suffix RR on the side, which stand for reissue or re-release. And once again, here we have the 20, the 726. And oddly enough, we have a New York Central boxcar, which I don't believe came in this color. We also do have the 671 again, also as a freight train. Now, with the 726, you will only get one operating car with this, which is, of course, the New York Central. But with the 671, you'll get two operating cars. You'll get the 3472 milk car, and then you'll get the operating ore dump car, or coal car, I should say. Here we have the 726 again, and they showed the wrong tender which came with it. It came with the metal tender instead of the plastic tender. And once again, you'll get some awesome selection of operating cars to go with it. You got the 3520 operating searchlight car, you got the cattle car and corral, and then you'll also get the 3461 lumber dump car. And then up here we have the CNO switcher yet again. We also do see the log loader and then the operating freight station. Next up we have some more beautiful illustrations, but this time we have the illustrations for both the Santa Fe and the New York Central F3. This time coming with B units, which actually popped up in 1950. So they were still kind of new, but they looked really cool at the same time. So no matter what set you would choose from, every, any kid would have loved to have either the Santa Fe or the New York Central. Now this is definitely one of my favorite illustrations of the Santa Fe F3. This is a 2343 uh, Streamliner set, also known as the Super Speeder Speedliner. And it really does live up, live up to name. Now this next page here is actually my favorite illustration of the Santa Fe F3. This is a 2343 Santa Fe Super Streamliner set with the first appearance of the new aluminum streamline passenger cars. And once again, this is the Super Streamliner. And oddly enough, this engine does come with magnet traction. So I kind of take that back. There were some engines during this time that did use magnet traction, but 95% of the other trains that Lionel made did not come with magnet traction in 1952. Let's get one more shot at that again. Once again, this is my favorite uh, page in the entire catalog. Just seeing the Santa Fe going through this beautiful canyon here. And then here we have the classic um, second best illustration in the catalog here. We have the brand new Lionel Signal Bridge. We also have the operating 362 barrel loader again. Let me just get my hand out of the way so you guys can see it better. There we go. But anyway, we have the Signal Bridge. We have the barrel loader. We have the switch tower again in the brown or should I say different type of colors that I mentioned. We also have the operating freight station. We also have the other freight station to go with it. And there's the um, floodlight tower again. And once again, they really took their time in um, making these drawings look as accurate, accurate as they can be. But they did a very beautiful job. I can't really stress that enough. We got some more diesels here. We have the 
brand new Lionel 2345 Western Pacific F3. We also do have the Rock Island Alco numbered 2031. Here we have a diagram for Lionel's worm gear system. And here we have the new aluminum streamlined passenger cars again. There we have the 2800 series of cars, or the 2400 series of cars, I mean. Here we have our operating cars. Then we have our regular type freight cars here. Here's the operating coal loader and the coal ramp. This is definitely an accessory that I want so badly for the 397. I do have the hopper to go with the, the coal loader, but I don't have the ramp, unfortunately. We got some more accessories here. And finally, we have our track plans on this side. We got um we also got a couple of switches and some crossing sections, some uncoupling tracks and so on. And there you have it. And then finally, our last page here shows the transformers including the mighty ZW uh, transformer with 275 watts. They also offered a Lionel KW and an RW transformer as well. So yeah, all these are very nice. All right, well, I hope you all have enjoyed today's little review of the Lionel 1952 catalog. Remember, there's only two more episodes left in the season until the final running session leading up to Christmas Day is coming out. So make sure to keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to hit the notification bell down below for any other projects that I upload. So thank you all for tuning in, and I'll see you all tomorrow in my next episode. Thanks again, and take care.